Alright, and this machine here is our one horsepower electric go-kart. This go-kart was built uh, back in, uh, let's see, we did this our senior year of high school. It was uh, some of my buddies and I that uh, worked on this. Um, the event was sponsored by uh, PPNL uh, and GPU Energy. Uh, those are the major electric companies around the area here. Uh, To build the cart, uh, every team was given a go-kart frame to start with, and ours is modified quite a bit. Um, from here, the, the part up to here, right there, that is the factory frame, uh, and then we added this here on the front to put your feet. Uh, we were shooting for a more low-slung position for the seating so that uh, we could improve the aerodynamics by putting this uh, body on top of it. And here's the controller right here. It's a uh, Curtis brand. It's meant f to run on uh, 24 to 36 volts. Uh, it is set up so that it could provide regenerative braking, however, we did not wire it that way. And there's the engine. It is a Scott Motors one horsepower permanent magnet motor. There's a label on that. And here we have a little duct work to help keep it cool. There's a little scoop underneath the machine. Right here. To direct air from the outside up and over the motor. And probably the biggest departure from the stock machine is the steering. We got rid of the steering wheel and the associated linkages, and we put this steering on here. And we put the controls, instead of having pedals, they're hand control. We have a throttle over here, and a brake over here. And underneath the machine here, you can see how the steering works. It's cable driven. We have a bar that comes down there from the handlebars and around these pulleys and over to the wheels. Those pulleys were actually salvaged off of a Huey helicopter. And this is the seat. The go-kart is powered by two Group 27 lead-acid batteries, which of course are not on the go-kart. They only lasted a couple of years in storage before they went completely dead. And uh, seeing as that was, uh, what was it, May 20th, 97, we had our race, uh, those batteries would be, well, they'd be pretty old now. So, they're not here. Unfortunately, there aren't any batteries on hand to fire it up with, so just looking at this thing's going to have to do. There's our voltage meter. Tell us how much juice we got left. Actually, the voltmeter is not all that accurate of a indicator of battery life. It would drop just a little bit, and uh, as the batteries would die, it would drop off real fast at the end. And protecting everything right here, we have a 60 amp breaker. 
and for the safety of the driver we added this roll bar and we have a three point seat belt it's actually out of a 1983 Volkswagen Rabbit and here it is all buttoned up just like it was going to race Now that whole go kart experience was um, probably one of the more uh, useful educational experiences I had in my high school career. Uh, I actually never took any formal shop classes or anything like that. Uh, a couple of my friends were in shop and they knew that I had built a go kart on my own beforehand, so uh, they asked if I wanted to get involved. And uh, what I did, it was, it was a lot of fun, um, and uh, we ended up winning. Uh, the competition overall, uh, and we also won some categories of endurance. Uh, we made the most laps. We actually set a new record for laps made in the endurance run. Uh, it was to see how many laps you can make in an hour, and actually most of the uh, most of the entries did not finish. We finished, then we made a victory lap. And then we brought it back to the school and we drove around the parking lot for a while and the batteries finally then wore down we had to recharge them. Uh, the, one of the better parts of the victory was we we pulled in there and you know we unloaded the go-kart and you know there were these guys from these vote techs that came over oh look at the look at the bubble car that thing that ain't gonna do anything blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well some of these guys with their big elaborate carts and some of these morons put centrifugal clutches on their electric cart, which is stupid since electric motors make maximum torque at zero RPM. Um, you know, and some people had like oversized wheels. It was stupid. You know, th this is where the minimalist approach really made the difference, and you know, it, it got us the win. Uh, one other thing that we had uh, to our advantage is we got two different sprockets. Uh, for, for the motor, two different sprockets for the motor, and we had one for acceleration and one for the endurance run. Uh, the top speed on the acceleration was a little lower, and uh, the top speed on the endurance one was actually higher. We, uh, it would do, a, uh, I think it was 33 or 34 miles an hour we would pull out of it. And if you click over here on more info, there's still a link to this. Uh, they still have the story on PPL Electric's website, and I've pasted the, a link and the full text of the article so that you can take a look at it if you so desire. And if anyone has any questions about building an electric go-kart, uh, feel free to fire me off a message. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, one horsepower uh, is a lot more than you might expect. I would put this up against a five-horse gas cart any day. The, the torque that you get from this thing is just incredible. So, like I said, any questions, let me know. Have a nice day.